Hi everybody, welcome back to the shop and welcome to another live stream here at EP3D Studios. I'm your host Matthew and in front of me behind you is my producer wife Emily. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, she is going to be doing the editing and running the chat and relaying your messages in my direction. Um, plus reading all whatever nonsense you guys can come up with because uh, <laughs> why is she looking at me funny? Sure, they're the nonsensical ones. No, they're not. I'm just calling them that just to make myself feel better. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and if you're new here, welcome. Um, this is a fun show, and uh, our regulars can tell you that we have a good time. And also, if you haven't yet, hit that like and subscribe button because we got to feel the algorithm. Um, so uh, we're going to let people kind of pile in here at the beginning, and uh, we'll kind of go over the plan of attack for today. Um, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, on the backstory, a couple weeks ago, we installed the BQ Micro Probe on the Sidewinder X2, and we got it set up with Marlin firmware, and uh, that went pretty smoothly and worked totally fine and great and um, wonderful. This week, we are doing the same thing, but in Clipper firmware. For those those of you running Clipper who might think about running this probe as an upgrade or change or something, um, it is definitely better than the probe that comes on the machine and. I've, I've had this on a few machines, and it is a really, really nice, accurate probe, and I am an advocate for it. So, um, yeah. So that is what we're going to do today. We need to put Clipper firmware back on the machine, because right now it currently has a build of Marlin on there from last time. So we're going to cover that, how to do that from the... Um, we're using the Big Tree Tech Pad 7. And uh, for those who may not see, have seen, I will show you how to use the Pad 7 to compile the firmware and push it directly to the machine without having to use your PC um, to upload it separately. Um, it's pretty easy um, if you know how to do it, and we're going to cover that. So my, my producer walked away. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? Are you on a stroll? <laughs> Just lazing about, slowly Wouldn't walking back. Would you like back. to know what I'm doing? I would actually. I got a spot on my glasses. It just won't quit. There we go. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, man. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, let's do introductions, shall we? Who's here? I'm here. Hi. <laughs> Clown. Clown world we live so in. So Rich would like us all to know that he was first. Hi, Rich. Thank you for being first. We appreciate it. And then Baron jumped in, and up, Arnand Baron? says hi. Hello, Arnand from Belgium, right? Mm, I think so. Yes. Mm. Let's see. Jeremy Pelling says good evening, all. Hello, Jeremy. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the show. And Casey R says howdy, all. Howdy, Casey. Thank you for showing up. We appreciate it. Oh, Jeremy says he's got one ready to go on his X2. Ooh, exciting. Yes. Well, when this is all done, I will share, I already have a link to this probe mount in the video description and I'll go ahead and, and I will share this configuration too as well uh, tonight sometime if I can, if not tomorrow. Absolutely. And thanks for coming back in. Yes. Me. I think last week, last week, we didn't do one last week. No, a week before. Well, the week before I think was your first live stream. So thanks for coming back. We yeah, appreciate it. For sure. Um, I know a lot of you have been patiently waiting for the clipper version of this setup which is so that is that is the thing today plus i really like running clipper on this machine it it takes to clipper very nicely so um still a great machine um what i don't know <laughs> we might be feeling a little off today we apologize in advance it's been a long couple of weeks it has what If only you can see her right now, the look that she's giving. You could probably see it like reflecting through space and time back to you. <laughs> um, so uh, we only have an hour today because we got to go to the, go uh, pick up our kid and we're going to go to the gym this afternoon. So we, let's let's get after it, shall we? <laughs> Rich blames the eclipse. Probably, yeah. Hopefully y'all made it through the eclipse safe. Right, the e e e eclipse apocalypse. <laughs> and... Uh, Ingleham says good evening. Hello, Ingle Ingleham. 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 Uh, it's a zero, 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 zero here. All zeros, huh? Time. Oh, midnight. Woof. 
and somewhere in Europe and in the uh, on the other side of the planet. Thank you for showing up. I know it's late. We appreciate you taking time out of your evening, night, morning now to show up and hang out with us. So we're not going to waste any more of your time. We're going to get right into this. First things first, this thing has to be put into DFU mode in order to be able to put push firmware to it. So uh, if you have Pronterface, you could connect. If you have Marlin and you use Pronter, well, if Marlin is currently on it and you need to put Clipper on it, use Pronterface to put it in DFU mode. Just um, do an M997. Um, or um, if that doesn't work, because on some machines that doesn't quite, it doesn't like it, I don't know why, um, you'll have to put it in DFU mode manually. So on the main board, we're gonna cover this, uh, I got a picture of it right here. There is, can you go to the, the mm -hmm. screen? Yeah, sure. Wow, well, yeah. sure. Um, on your main board, there's this little cluster of uh, pins right here in the middle, and you'll put a jumper between boot and 3.3 volt. And use a jumper, don't use a, a paper Something clipper, else. anything else, yeah, because you could, you could cause issues if you don't do this right. Um, so, uh, which we don't want. Uh, so for me, I've actually wired a switch to it because I go back and forth for these streams and stuff like that, and it makes it easier. Don't have to take the bottom cover off and stuff like that. So, uh, that is my jumper, and it's kind of nice to be able to do that. And also, when you do this, if you're doing it manually. Power it with USB only. Do not turn on mains power. Unplug the machine from the wall if you have to. Why? Because some people forget that they have their switch on and then they have issues. That's why. <laughs> I'm not saying everyone's gonna do that, but it can happen. So just unplug it, which I will do, see? No power, unplugged. We're gonna go ahead and turn this sucker on uh maybe there we go helps if it's plugged in all the way and baron says talent getting lazy say it ain't so <laughs> <laughs> and rich says the eclipse was easy the earthquake that they had up in new york was the was the frightening part you know i was there in new jersey in in the last relatively large earthquake like 2010 or 11 uh, and people were freaking out it was silly and it wasn't even that bad it was like the same thing 4.5 or something like that yeah, but people on the East Coast don't get a lot of... No, they're not used to that. It'd be like us on the West Coast here in the Northern West Coast getting a hurricane. <laughs> I'd, be I'd, be I'd be pretty freaked out. <laughs> We're up on high ground here, so... Rich says 2017. That was the last earthquake there? Okay. I was there around 2010-ish, and there was a pretty decent one, so... Uh, yeah. All right. So we're powered on. It should be in DFU mode with the switch there. So we're going to go ahead and SSH into this guy. Uh, let's bring out his programming putty. Are those real acronyms or are you just making stuff up? SSH, secure shell is what they call that. Uh, host name, SWX2 dot local, I believe is what I have it at. Mm. Could not open. Uh, menu, network, are we connected? I don't remember if Matt said it. We apologize for not being Pad here seven. last week, oh, but it was spring break oh. for our daughter who's in daycare, not in school, but also had spring break. So we decided to spare you Hurricane Zoe last week. Yeah. Huh, I didn't want to connect to that one either. So we'll just do the IP address. 192.168.0. Comes with my number lock is on. 2.168. Dot. Uh, what is that? 50.217. We connect to the right network. Yeah. There we go. PIQU, enter. PIQU, enter. We are N. And we want to go to Kiowa. Sure, update. Done. All right, from Kiowa, we're going to, uh, let's see, advanced for build and flash for, and it's going to bring up the make menu config, and it should still be on the last one I did. Yep, STM32, 401, no boot later. No bootloader, eight megahertz. 
USB, blah, 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 all the same stuff. So you press. So if you're doing this your first time, make sure you have uh, extra low level configuration op options enabled. It's an STM32 microcontroller and it is the processor STM32F401. It does not have a bootloader. Um, well, no bootloader offset anyway. Um, clock reference is eight megahertz and it's communicating via USB. You have all that set up, press Q and it will build the firmware file. I bet you people can hear that thing. No, continue, you're fine. Rich says, funny part is how many people thought it was just a truck, a truck or a train passing by. The epicenter was in New Jersey, about 10 miles from his sister's house, and it scared the Dead. bananas out of his brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, earthquakes can be noisy. Um, when the ground rumbles like that, it makes some noise. So I was, I was a kid living in Southern California during the... Um, uh, North Northridge or whatever earthquake is like a six point nine or something like that. It was a pretty, hmm. pretty wild ride. And I like took out some bridges. That did some damage. It was like in the nineties. I think best one I had was in nineteen ninety four. We had a big one. Nineteen ninety three apparently. Let's see, six point oh. Nice. All right, here we are. Flash MCU. Are you on the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Flash MV, it, it, Flash MCU. One for regular flashing method. How to flash. Make flash. Make serial flash. Just default one. Oh, it's already selected. Enter. And it is USB DFU mode. Three. Here we go, attention, make sure you select the correct MCU so it sees it, there's only one. So MCU number one, flash, continue. Yes, it's like asking you several times, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. And it will put the firmware file directly to the MCU. Super simple, done, look at that. Okay, uh, let's go back, uh, quit. We will uh, shut the sucker down. And if Drew was here, he would be like, ah, don't just turn it off. It's fine. It's you fine. know what? That's what Drew gets for not being here. Right. Take it out of DFU mode. So remove said jumper. Some people don't remove the jumper and they wonder why it doesn't work. Which is kind of funny. All right. And then... Power with main power. QCR says, Kiowa, thanks for the reminder to update the firmware on my Clipper install. There you go. Yeah, sometimes um, as you update the actual Clipper portion on your Raspberry Pi or whatever you're using, it will update it to a point to where it wants a new firmware on the MCU. I guess there's different features and stuff like that that get added. So it helps to be able to just push it from your, your device. Um, and Revo91PL says, hello, mighty Sidewinder magician. <laughs> hello. Revo, what was it? 91PL. 91PL. Thank you for showing up. We appreciate your, uh, your presence. All right, I think we're in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up a browser here and get to our, our deal. Um, I'm just going to give you the IP address. 2.168.50.217. Open up main sale, add printer, um, host name, IP, I think it's S, well, 192.168.50.217, add printer, there we go, it knows it's there, I have a few, I have a few instances set up on here, so I've already got, I've already had my config files and stuff on here, so I just immediately connected as soon as it saw the right MCU firmware. But what we do need to do, what we gotta do do, is go to our printer CFG and we gotta make some changes here. So I'm gonna scroll down to leveling. Where are we at, leveling, all right. And we are going to take all of this and we're just gonna 
Rich is on board with the new name, Mighty Sidewinder, <laughs> Mighty Sidewinder Magician. I appreciate that. I like it. And we're going to... We're going to add some sections. So f there's no instructions specifically for this machine. They have it in there. Um, where was that? In the user manual for this thing, they have it in there for several big tree tech boards. Um, but we could just use the information they give and provide the correct pin numbers. Uh, and that should work. So we're going to scroll down until we have instructions here. So that's for an M5P. Sure. While you're scrolling. Yep. Revo says, I've got a question a bit off topic, mm -hmm. and there's no better person to answer, actually. Oh. Till now, I hadn't thought about asking you, and then the live popped up in my feed. Well, shoot away. Ask. Did I miss the question? No. No. Okay. Not yet. Feel free to send us that question. <laughs> right. Okay. Just wanted so, to let you know that there's an incoming question. There's an, yep, send that question along. Yeah, so it's all the same. Let's see, that has input, output, macro, macro, probe, and offsets. Does this seem different? Output, macro, macro, probe, offsets. Yeah, it's all the same stuff. And I'm not sure there's anything exactly off topic in these live streams because we are just off topic. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna take this. I don't think, yeah, it's not gonna allow me to copy it. So we're just gonna have to type all this stuff in. So. There's no way it's not gonna allow you to copy that. Uh, actually, if I go edit text maybe, yeah. There we go. <laughs> no way. Good point. <laughs> it might make it different. All right, so. Mm, George Martin says hello from Portugal. Hello, George Martin from Portugal. Thank you for showing up. Welcome to the show. I'm just going to take all this stuff and paste it in. Um, if you try to do it all at once, it will change the syntax and mess it all up. So... I think I can just do the rest of this. Yeah. Um, pen. Yeah, right. so it moved this, right? We need that to be on its own line. There we go. And then X offset. Y offset needs to be its own line. Z offset needs to be its own line. So just get a, make sure you, you see that. All right, and then activate G code. Ooh, that's a good question. Deactivate G code. What's your question? Well, first of all, George, so George Martin says, tomorrow morning I'll see the whole video. Uh, but Revo asks, he's got a Sidewinder X1 version four and it's been unused for a while. Wow. He got a bamboo and is considering getting another core XY. Do you think you should take apart the Sidewinder for the future or mod the heck out of it? Is That's it a... worth the hassle? Um, it depends on what you're going to do with it. If you want a really cool modded machine, mod the heck out of it. Or um, are you talking about tear it apart to convert it to core XY? You could. It would take quite a bit to do, and it might be... I mean, it, it depends on how tech-savvy you are and mechanically-savvy you are. If that's your thing, yeah, do it. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, it'd be a cool project. Um, if you're not super tech-savvy or mechanically-savvy, uh, it might be easier to um, start out with a Core XY machine that you could either upgrade as you go or just get a pretty decent one out of the box. It's really up to you and what you want to do with it. Um, the, the, the Sidewinder X1 in itself with some upgrades. It's a good machine. Um, so especially if you put a good 32-bit board in it and stuff like that, um, and some better separate drivers, it's a pretty solid machine. Um, not exactly fast, but you can get some pretty good quality out of it if you've got it dialed in just right. So. Oh, Rupo just gave you a super chat, 10 pounds. Oh, thank you so much. It I really appreciate it. Thank you for it. your wisdom. Been following for a while, just never spoken up. Oh, well, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Well, too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. So, looks like we have all the information we need in here. So, we need to change these pins. Output pin probe enable on whatever board this is for. The M8P. It's PB1. 
on this, let's go to our probes. Uh, actually, I have it written down here. So pin enable would be the control pin. So C, that would be PC3. All right, come back here. Rich says he's got a, he also has two bamboos. He was slowly but surely modding, modding his X1. He's got, he got it non-working and now it has a clipper five inch touch screen and a BL touch. Nice. He says it's been great for learning how these things work. Excellent. It's true. It's a good learning curve doing yeah. your mods. Definitely teaches you a lot about these things and what you got going on. Yeah. Um, and there's tons of, well, I wouldn't say tons, but there's a fair amount of support for them. You could find parts and information you need. Um, not quite as prolific as the Ender machines, but I think these are way cooler than the Ender machines, though. They're better, in my opinion. Um, so... Pro pin has the little up arrow carrot thing, then a exclamation point, and then it's pin PC2. And that should be good. All right, offsets. Our X offset for this, where did I write that down? It's plus 32.63. 32.63. Our Y offset, and this is if you're using my mount, uh, is minus 28. 0 0.05 our Z offset we're gonna leave at zero and we'll adjust it as we go speed five sure <laughs> I think that's right <laughs> sure sure YOLO save and restart let's see how she does let's see option control pin in section BL touch must be specified I thought I commented the entire BL touch section out. Mm. Mm. Like stuck the rock in the hard place. place. It's been considering taking the Side window mm. apart or selling it, but it's not worth much, so it's not necessarily worth the hassle. Can't donate it because, again, there's too much messing about with the printer before you can. It's right. just stuck in a rough spot. Yeah. Ah, here we go. This is why I messed up. I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take this and move it over just so. Oh, and Ingleham asks, I got a 2209 stepper driver laying around. I wonder if they provide any meaningful improvement over the default ones. He's using Clipper. Um, if we're able to control them over UART mode, then yeah. Um, other than that, really no. I mean, the, the, the stock 2100s are just fine. You can't control them over UART, so you have to manually tune the... Um, the voltage on it. Um, so if you have 2209s and you want to use them in this, you'll have to re redo the firmware, run them in standalone mode, and then have to manually tune the voltage. Um, they are a little bit more quiet and they could take a little bit more current. So um, is it really a meaningful upgrade? Eh, I don't know. I'm, I'm still running stock drivers in this and it does pretty good. I mean, I could, I have some 2209s. I could try it just to test it out. That could be a fun stream, switching them over. Um, right. So it gave me an error saying BL touch section because it has this saved in here for my Z offset. So I'm just going to remove that. And now it doesn't have a BL touch section anymore. I always forget about that, that it saves that stuff down there. So Baron Boom, chimed right. in saying, mods I can deal with mechanically. Clipper's been driving me crazy lately. <laughs> Missing file errors that I can't track down. Nozzle crashing into the bed on homing. He says, shoot me now. <laughs> it, can be, it can be frustrating at first. It's kind of a learning curve to it. But once you really get, get a good grasp of it, it's totally worth the time spent. Um, because you can just go through and figure out how to make changes however you want. And it's really capable. And the support community for it is huge. Um, and the documentation for it on the website is really big. Mm, Rich just made a really good point too. He keeps his X1 for larger prints or things mm -hmm. that he doesn't really care about how long they take. Yeah. So especially if you're doing big, long PLA prints, mm -hmm. right? Oh, you're not going to see that on that camera. That's okay. I'm just okay. testing the probe here. I can switch it over to you. Is that good? Sure. 
All right, so uh, dashboard. Yeah. No, you're gonna go back to your computer. That's not fair. No, I'm just gonna try to home all, and I'm gonna test it, oh. make sure that it that it works. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Revo responder. It's thing recently came to need a little bit more than 256 millimeter. Yes. Yeah, that bamboo wrong. gives just a tad, but the new Solval. Solval. Solval, coming out. <laughs> He says, new solo coming out, dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> right. Uh, it looks like a cool machine. I saw a little bit about it. So it says, end stop Z still triggered after restart. Mm. Mm, I've done something wrong. Same. 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 Yep. So I hope I can get this figured out here. Um, All right. What do we got? Um... Casey says, KCR says, I have an X1 version 4 modified to use Clipper running on a MakerBase MKS Pi and a BL Touch. It isn't the fastest, but considerably faster than original. Oh, yeah. It's been very reliable with the mods. Nice. He says, I do want to own a Bamboo X1 Carbon, though. That would be fun. Same. We have a Bamboo X1 Carbon at work, and it is great. I use that thing almost every day. I'm pretty sure that's the printer you use more than any other printer that you've ever had. Probably. Not that you have that printer, but so. All right. So let's see. Pro pin. Uh, Rebo says he also needs space. In the, space Apartments in the UK aren't exactly massive. All right. <laughs> uh, let's output pin. Probe enable PC3. <laughs> Baron says, seriously, looking at the... Soval, if it's under six hundred dollars U.S. for a Veron clone, sign me up. Right. I might need to. Re I, get, I might have to reverse one of these. So we're gonna reverse that one and try it. Oh well. We didn't see any of that. Oh, uh, we'll see you later. The light. Oh, it's resetting. Okay, getting that back in view here. Ah. All right, let's try that again. Dashboard, oh. home wall. It's you, okay. You are all over the place today. I like that lime green, by the way. Very sharp. Yep, still did not work. All right. Um, I have goofed something here. So we'll unreverse that other one. And does this need to pull up? It does need to pull up, but we'll remove that. Reverse the probe. Uh, oh, Revo. Five dollars, five, five pounds. Um, oh, thank you, man. He says, I've taken you off topic. Have a good stream, guys. Yet again, thank you for your wisdom. Oh, mighty Sidewinder Magician. <laughs> appreciate <laughs> thank you, you guys. so much. We appreciate you. Legitimately, there's no taking us off topic. You said you've been here, been around for a little while. You would, you know. We are, we are just off topic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Probe to bless. Let's try the. Yeah, it doesn't want to. Hmm. That's not working. Hmm. Baron says, which pin was reversed? Was it a exclamation point command or something else yeah the exclamation point reverses the logic of a pin so if you have a pin that like if it's like a direction or some sort of enable disable um basically any um direction controlling logic you just use an exclamation point in front of it and that reverses a logic so but my probe deploy so you, it creates a macro for this that, that it uses and it's not functioning so is it plugged in? Yeah, it's all plugged in. It's here. Um, so troubleshooting. Um, if you haven't, if you can't tell, I've not tried it on this machine before. So in theory, it should work. Probe deploy. Allow 500 milliseconds for the probe to deploy. That's correct. That's correct. Put the exclamation point back Reload here. Good. At Rich, while well, my girlfriend lives with me, wished I could use her wardrobe or for, wardrobe for at least spools of filaments. Mm. <laughs> That's a way to get yourself in trouble, sir. <laughs> right. 
and says, all right, nighty night. Thank you so much for coming by, Revo. Thank you so much for your support. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Have a good sleep. Okay, so we put that back. I'm pretty sure it needs to pull up for that. Um, You, uh, Let's look on here. Your printer is not um, inside trained. Huh. Right. And that's all the same. That's all the same. All these are exactly the same, just different pin numbers for different boards. I've run into this before and I don't remember what I changed. Um, ran into it on, um, I think that was Glenn's machine. I, it might have something to do with, well, it's not deploying, so. Uh, let's take off the pull up and just go through. Sometimes it's, it's, you just tinker with it until you figure it out, until it works. <laughs> Right. Ben wants to know if you used the right board. Uh, I, so I changed the pin numbers to match the board on on this machine. Uh, I just use those instructions to give me a general the, the the layout, and you just put whatever pin numbers are there your control and pro pins, and I might even have them backwards. I don't know. Let's try again. I might even need to reboot the machine. Who knows? Nope. And stop Z still triggered after restart. Make sure this thing can move. <laughs> yeah, it moves freely. It moves freely. So let's shut this down and restart this all. Let's see. Shut down. And it should, that probe should cycle. Brant Miller says, hello. What are we all working on today? Hello, Grant. We are installing a... Brant. Brant. Sorry. Hello, Brant. We are installing a BQ micro probe on a Sidewinder X2 using Clipper. Oh. Okay. Self-test works. Maybe that's what it needed, a good restart and a proper self-test. Because I don't think it did that when we first powered it up. It missed it. I must have missed it too, because I couldn't die. Connecting. printer there we go we're in we're in all right um all right let's see if that macro works now probe deploy hey probe snow hang on hang on hang on, hang on. hey one more i'll move this one down more. for you probe deploy probe stow all right i think it just needed a reboot sometimes it needs that um now did i does it still have the pull up I'm pretty sure it needs that for it to actually function right. Part of the way this works. Uh, yeah, we're going to put that back. <laughs> mm, and that is, I can never remember. Baron responds to Brant saying he's, what he's working on is taking his hair out because he doesn't understand Clipper file structure yet. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it, it can be very confusing and it's, it's people overcomplicated. It. It's simpler than it looks. Um, mm -hmm. if you... I feel like I've had quite a few conversations about that exact kind of thing lately. Right. All right. Now let's see. Home all. Make sure I'm... There we go. So it works. It's always good to test it so you don't slam. <laughs> um, firmware restart.
Boom. All right, we'll home all again. And make sure she homes all right and we don't send bearings everywhere. I didn't touch the height, so it shouldn't send bearings everywhere if it works. Huh. And it's doing it again. Mm. We'll repower this thing again. You're clicking inside. Maybe it doesn't need to pull up. Probe. Would you like to officially propose a new channel name? What's that? Struggle bussin. Struggle bussin, yeah, for real. I had something better, and then for some reason when you said why is that, it threw me off. All right, we'll repower this thing again. Maybe it doesn't need to pull up in this specific situation, which is weird if it didn't. It's gonna be mad. Brent says he likes, um, he actually likes Clipper and he finds it pretty easy. He likes it over Marlin simply for the ease of changing settings without recompiling and it was a short learning curve. Yeah. Although um, he didn't have a lot of experience with Marlin. Mm. <laughs> That's fair. Marlin can be complicated. Um, it's not quite as intuitive as Clipper can be. I'm adding to it, Baron. I'm going to add the to it. The magical, the magic struggle bus. The magic struggle bus. We can get you a, well, we can't do a lizard because that's too much of a knockoff, right? Right. So it would have to, what is going on? There we go. Oh, it needs, it um, doesn't, it doesn't want go. that. All right. Uh, You're going back and forth too many times. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. just leaving it. Yep. All right. So. It seemed to function without the pull-up, which, okay. It could be something weird with this artillery board. And watch, it's not going to deploy now. Yeah, oh, it gets super angry about that. Hmm. That is peculiar. Right. Well, this is how you know we have a kid. Like a young kid. And KCR says something logical. For me, Clipper is easier to fix mistakes. And all I can hear is, Ooh. for me, it's Kong. <laughs> it's Kong. You know what? It didn't self-test that time. Why not? Casey says, and I make plenty of mistakes. We all do. There we go. So, we might be running into a little issue with, for something the way that the way this main board operates. Uh, it may not really like this probe all that much. Like if you have a, have some sort of an error, it's not as simple as just restarting the firmware as actually power cycling the whole machine. Um, which is strange because uh, on other machines I've, I've used this probe on, I've not had to do that. You just restart the firmware and it works. So. Oh, that's a lovely sound. What? To to. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. Meanwhile, okay. No. Yeah, all right, we're just gonna, we're gonna do it. Because if I test it, it's going to break it again. I don't want to... So let's see if we send bearings everywhere. <laughs> it's jammed up above. All right. That worked. Okay. So it's working. That was strange. Um... 
since I do have this working, I want to update this. So I have, where is my, I should have a macro for saving this. Where is it? Interesting. It's not here. Um, does it show it on here? Huh. Ah. Okay. Fine. So let's, uh, we gotta get a test print. We gotta get a good mesh, uh, home offset, all that kind of stuff. So let's get an offset done. Um, we'll do it from here. And we're gonna do it with it. Oh, we, we should preheat it, yep. Temperature. Uh, preheat PLA. Wow, I need to go through and change these settings because they are wrong. Wrong. 210, actually we'll go 220. And 60. Nice thing is this thing heats up pretty darn quick. We'll get, yeah, we have just enough time to get an offset done, get a get a mesh done, and then um, start a start a test print. And in fact, we don't even need to do the mesh because it's got camp. Um. So I could even close that and go straight to Orca Slicer. Oh what? What? I totally missed it. Thanks, Baron. Donkey romper. Donkey romper. Sends a cow. Sends a cow? Sends a cow. Nice. We like cows. <laughs> and Baird says, donkey romper in the hoose on the loose. <laughs> 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 Love the cow donkey romper. It's perfect. I think that's a cow. Looks like a cow. Or my mind wants to see cows. I don't know. I like cows. Cows are fun. Um, Brant wants to know, are you able to test the end stop before hitting the go button? Which that might have been. Um, I was able to, um, but once it errors out, it doesn't. It seems like you need to power cycle the machine for it to actually be able to function again, which is kind of strange, um, but it works. So yeah, test it. If it stops, it's good. Power cycle everything, and you should be. It should be fine. And um, Arnon says, "Hi, Arnon from Belgium. Happy to follow you." I have not assembled my pad seven yet. I'm afraid to start the procedure. Forgive me, because this is really long. The TFTGD32F305 card does mm. not change anything in the procedure. Uh, oh yes, yeah. so when you have Clipper installed, the stock TFT machine it becomes completely useless. It won't work with it. Um, and you could leave it connected and it doesn't do anything um, or just disconnect it. Um, but it has no function afterwards. All your functionality is going to come from your pad seven. So, Speaking of, do we know when you're going to get your next new toy? Uh, no, I checked the tracking. It still says that it's, um, that the carrier has received it and it's not moved anywhere. Have we given them a sneak peek of what might be coming up next? Do we um, want to give them a sneak peek of the secret that's going to be coming up next? So Big Tree Tech didn't tell me otherwise, but they did announce it on their Facebook page with a uh, release date of April 20th. Well, then I guess we can leave it with that. Right. So there's something yeah, that's going to be released on April 20th. Yeah, I'm getting a new thing from Big Tree Tech, hopefully soon, um, to show you all. And it's a brand new item from them, and we are super excited about it. Um, Rich says, new toy? What is it? Tell us, tell us. And at that point, you're making them assume that you're getting a new printer or something. It's like, not you're you're definitely new... giving it more hype than it should have. It is not a new printer. I wish it was, but um, it is not. Um, but that is fine. <laughs> um, I actually would love to try a Big Tree Tech printer. I've never tried one. Mm. So Hint, hint. In case if you guys are watching. <laughs> In case if your marketing people are walking, <laughs> watching, I would love to test out a Big Tree Tech machine. They look super cool. I mean, the main boards are great. Their hardware is great. Their extruders are great. The printer's got to be good. 
Just throwing that out there. Um, <laughs> Jeremy says, tease. Tease. Rich says, new toy. What is it? Tell us, tell us. And Jeremy says, tease. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess. No, I think, I think that's probably the best to leave it there. Yeah, we'll leave it that. If you don't know. Um, they they haven't to told me whether or not I could talk about it other than, I mean, they announced it on their Facebook page. So just saying that it's a new thing is coming probably isn't, doesn't hurt. But it's, I'm going to leave it that. New thing is coming. I'm getting one. Going to show you guys later. Mm -hmm. April 20th-ish. Um, Man, that's forever from now. 11 days. Hopefully it gets here by then. That's forever. I know, right? Um, t -t 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 desktop, desktop. I have this yeah. handy dandy level test STL here. Boom. Look at that. Uh, make sure it connects. Yep. Connected. No problem. I need to load up some filament. Uh, let's move this thing up and out of the way. Um, Z. Up, up, up. That's good and out of the way. Let's get this rolling here. Actually, I'm just gonna toss it up here for now. It's not that heavy. And macros load filament. Oh, it already changed. Okay, I forgot that macro moves it up. So it will heat it up a little bit more here. Oh, we have just enough time to do this print. Uh huh. Uh huh. And Donkey Robber says instruction and customer support not great, but ethereal too to rescue. Right. Um, I've really never had to mess with their their customer support, so I, I don't know. Um, the contact I have with them is through their marketing department, so it's probably different than customer support. Um, the marketing people have been great and and responsive, so. Um, that's about all I can do. That's all about all I could say. I've not have to, had to work with their customer support before. So, which should be a good thing if I have had their products for a while and never had that contact customer support. In my opinion, that means their products are, are working okay for me. Um, I have fried one of their boards, but it was my fault. Am I alone or is this just super satisfying? It's like, so satisfying. I need just like... A 12 hour ASMR video of this. This is it. <laughs> just, this is all of it. I could just, I could make I could a macro a that, that just extrudes nothing but material here. Um, oh, we gotta do our, our offset thing. Let's start printing in the air. That'd be lame. Uh, nice piece of paper here. Let's go. Um, we need more. more. Uh, Z calibrate start. Wow, that's <laughs> slow. Oh, dun, dun. oh yeah, because it's already home. It knows where dun. it's at. <sighs> All right, fine. I'll turn my mic off. I'll leave you. You're alone. fine. Nope, too late. Stop. Okay. Oh, it, it homed on this. Oh. Grr. Abort. Uh, Z calibrate, start. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be a way to change that speed because that is mind numbingly slow. Oh, I know. It's I. I know. I know why it's that slow. Okay. Let's go down, down, down. How far are we? It's still moving. I just can't see. I don't want to go too far and lose my bearings here. Oh, there we go. Point one, let's go back up. Which wants to know, is it the SFS 2.0? SFS 2.0? No, I don't know what that is. We're going to accept that, accept. And it should restart the firmware. Now I wonder if restarting the firmware this way messes with it. Mm. 
Um, because now we have a proper offset well at home correctly. Okay, that worked. Thank you for the suggestion, Baron. What do you think of that? How does that work out? Baron says, Mike can start moving the picture in picture if the printer is hiding behind the subscribe button. Oh no! We're gonna have to fix that. So I put you in the top. Right. right. Perfect. All right. We're going to prepare that. Uh, uh, others, we're gonna do zero skirt stuff. Uh, strength walls two. Fine, 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 fine. Slice. Mm. I do not want mouse ears. Uh, others. I don't know if that's the best place for it either, though. No brim. There we go. Six mm -hmm. and a half minutes. Seven minutes. That should work just fine. Print, upload, and print. Mm. I feel like any spot I put that, it's pretty much the worst. Mm. This will be interesting to see where camp puts the purge line. Because I have, I wonder, because I have the purge line... 35 or something millimeters in front of the nozzle, but it knows to put it out of the way of the print. So is it gonna find a spot somewhere where it knows there's not something? Very curious. We are heating up. Because I have printed something that took up most of the y-axis, and it knew that, and so it put the purge line away, knowing mm. that, like it knows, so. Unfortunately, Baron, I can't move it just a little bit, but I can throw it off to the left there. Oh, I can go into the um, Blackmagic oh. settings and He's... move it. Locked me out of the ability to do that. You could open it up on your computer. Typical corporate baloney. You Just can't change magic. something like that. <laughs> See what I have to work with here, guys? See what I got to work with? I told her she could open it right now. She's claiming to be <laughs> locked out. Like, no, it's right there in your start menu. <laughs> uh, Rich says the SF 2.0 is the smart filament sensor. It's the newest product mm. on the BTT side. But then there's also a bunch of stuff they're announcing on the 20th. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rich is trying to get you to spill the beans. Mm -hmm. He's being sneaky. Mm -hmm. I know of two things they're announcing on the 20th. He's being sneaky. Um, so. And then you're over there like, can't be sneaky. I know more than you. I'm like really ruining it for people, making them wonder. That's, that's what you do. You get like, you really fuel up that hype train. It keeps them coming back, right? What day is the 20th, anyway? It's the 20th. Like, is it a Monday? Is it a seven day? Like... Come on. <laughs> Come on. I know, right? It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday? Mm. Oh, mm. that sucks. I would love to do a, do a stream on release day if I have it. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna get that time off. Yeah, I know. But that Monday or even Sunday, technically, we could. Rich says the BTT Pi 2 and the CB2 are a mystery product. I don't know what any of those things are. Mystery. Big Tree Tech Pi 2 and mm. the CB2? Mm -hmm. It's the chip that would be on the Pi. Oh, So like for the cool. Pi 1.2, the CB1 is the chip. So. Oh, and a mystery product. Sorry. And a mystery product. Mm -hmm. Not are a mystery product. I wonder, at this point, Drew would have already yelled at me that I can't read. Yeah. I wonder what that mystery product is. Don't you raise your eyebrows mysteriously like that. You put those eyebrows back, sir. I put can them either back. confirm or deny put my knowledge back. of said product. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to move this back. You know, I think I'm going to move you back to the top right because... Now you're just in the way of the print. Oh, I just didn't do a purge line. I said, no, I don't have room for it, so I'm not going to put it there. Which means it's going to take it a hot second to get filament down. Ingleham, ink, 
Eggleham says, do you, hmm, my word. Did you change the mesh offsets? Doesn't look like it. Uh, I did, um, but I usually, I do this print to be able to fine tune it, right? So, oh, there we go. We're laying down plastic now. And Rich says, LOL, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> do I though? I don't know if I know, but do I know? Do you know if I know? All I, I can not. say is put the eyebrows back down. I might not know. I'm tuning, let's see which direction we need to go with this. It's basically perfect. Um, and that is one thing I've been pretty impressed with is the accuracy of this probe. It's a little bit better than the BL touches and the, the CR, your typical um, probes that, that have been around for a while. So this one, it uses the same wiring, but it operates differently. It operates um, like a touch probe. Um, so it doesn't have like the cycle and test. And you can go in there and tell it the test multiple times, but it doesn't retract the probe every time. It saves you a little bit of, saves a little bit of time. And, and I believe it, it adds to some accuracy. And you do believe? Mm -hmm. You do declare? I do declare. How come you only got like half of a triangle back there? Oh, because it didn't do the purge line. Hmm. So when I have it load the filament, it loads it and then retracts um, some, I don't know, 18 or so millimeters. Um, and then the purge line typically will make up for that. But since this print takes up the area where it believes it can put a purge line, it doesn't create one. So note to self or note to all of you, if you have camp installed, and you're printing something and it takes up all the space of the, your X and Y, of your build plate, it may not do your purge line. It didn't do it this time. So, so did, don't do that. It didn't. Oh, it said unknown command line purge. Interesting. Huh. I was going to see like, what is the error? But you know, an unknown command line purge. So I've got something somewhere goofed. Um, probably with my camp settings, I gotta go in there and mess with, but it still works. Like it's laying it down and they look good. So. Oh my goodness. I'm having the hardest trouble today with this thing. <laughs> oh, we have three minutes. Baron says in a Daffy Duck voice, you're despicable. Despicable. <laughs> says only because I struggle with leveling and he's jealous. Oh, oh, cause it just worked first time. Well, two things. This probe is awesome. And I've just, I've gotten the feel. I've learned, I've done it so many times because it's a kind of a subjective thing. We right? could literally hear you trying to refrain from saying, and I'm awesome. I don't need to say that. It's implied. <laughs> I've, I, I'm the sidewinder wizard, right? Is that what it is? <laughs> or the magician? The mighty sidewinder magician. Might need to go down just a hair. Ickleham says, happy with my CR touch probe. Accuracy often yields zero deviation. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, the CR touch is great. I, I like the CR touch better than the BL touch. Um, it doesn't have as many um, uncommanded um, deployments. I mean, it still has, but that is only when I'm printing PETG and the fan is at like 25, 30%. And so that if you have a Sidewinder X1 or X2 and you get that uncommanded probe deployment, um, that I believe is coming from interference from your fan. Since the fan runs on a PWM signal and the probe uses a PWM signal, that whatever frequency it's using for that 25, 30% fan speed is bleeding over into the probe circuitry. Um, it's not as bad on the X2 because there is a capacitor that will absorb some of that, um, but it does do it sometimes. Um, on the X1, just about every time I'm doing anything and the fan is at 25, 30%, it will do it. I've broken many BL Touch Pro pins because of that. So I just don't print PETG on it anymore. Um, Rich says he has a CR Touch on his Genius Pro and a BL Touch on his Sidewinder X1. He likes the CR Touch better. Yeah. And Baron said, camp settings for the win. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy Pelling would like to know, no pull-up then? No pull-up apparently. Um, which is the first time I run into this where you don't need the pull up for this kind of probe. So, and it nah, could be that it's four o'clock. It's um, with this board, it just doesn't need it, or if it 
has the correct voltage already. But that is four o'clock. And that is all, folks. Speaking of Daffy Duck. <laughs> oh no, there's two squares left. Literally, how much time does it say? One minute, 24 seconds. Jose says, I ordered two of those BIQU. I'm going to replace one for my Ender 3 S1 Pro. Mm. There's a known problem with the CR Touch. Still debating where the second one is going. Interesting. Well, I haven't heard any problems with the CR Touch. Um, for your Ender 3 on there, they, I think even um, Big Tree Tech has a mount you could either print or purchase that is specifically made for that. And probably firmware. So. Oh yeah, those are perfect. Right out of the box. Um, In that case, uh... We'll let it finish this one. You can go pick up. So you're gonna end it? Yeah, we'll end it here in just a minute when this is done. <laughs> don't take that patronizing voice with me, sir. And uh, if you don't mind, go pick up the kiddo. I will throw things at you. And I'll get our gym stuff ready to get us water and stuff like that. I have things Plus, I, I can change. throw at you. Yeah, like a whole monitor, a Rubik's Cube. Donkey Romper sends a cat. Right. Speaking of, what would you guys right? think? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys think of adding some cubing content to the channel? I've got some ideas. Because this is my other passion. <laughs> cubing. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm doing pretty good, all right? I got my time down to 28 seconds. I'm thinking about it, Rich. I'm thinking about it. Jose says yes. Oh, the it last one. had an option to purchase a mount for the Enders. Right. And Baron says thanks for the, thanks for the show. Safe drive, Emily. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to have a safe drive, though. Right, not me. All right, so, well, the last one failed. Not no. sure why on that corner. Um... That's weird. So, but. Oh, come on. Really? It just, it, it, it left just a, a bit. It, it, stop. Stop. <laughs> all right. I'll put it right here. Better? Yes. Okay. The well, last one failed. I'm um, not sure why. The rest of them look absolutely perfect. Um, so I could bet I could run it again. It'd probably work just fine. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, with. With just a few snafus, a little bit of adjustment, and it's, Rich it's good says to go. the purple glue stick will fix that. Yes, I bet you it would. Um, the outsides, typically the corners, don't really work that well in this machine. The heat is not as good. Um, just the way the heater and the glass is. So, but yeah, I call that a win. Um, it works. No pull up. Funny enough, um, in the video description there is a link to this mount um, and to get to the probe. I, I don't know if I left an Amazon link or not, but I left a link to the BQ website. Um, but you can pick them up on, on Amazon and stuff like that. So, um, but on that note, we do have to get out of here. We do have to cut this off at right at that hour mark. Um, we have business to take care of, uh, i.e. gym workout, because we need to get in better shape. So for everyone that showed up, thank you for coming by. Thanks for watching. For those that gave your super chats, we super appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, it means a lot to us that you're willing to... Uh, give up some of your hard-earned money to help us out because uh, every every penny does help the channel It helps us be able to afford some of this stuff and do fun fancy fancy things and do silly modifications um, I Will get this configuration updated and put on online here as soon as I can um, If it's not online in a couple days harass me on discord. Uh, I'll, I'll end up getting it. I get I get busy So but we do have to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching Follow us on Instagram, Facebook at Ethereal Project 3D. Also check out check us out on Discord. I am there. It's on my phone. I'm constantly seeing messages and stuff like that, and I try to comment when I can. Um, it has been busy, but it should slow down here soon. So, on that note, we do have to get out of here. On that twelfth note, of we do have to get out of here. I suck at goodbyes. Okay, um, but yeah, happy 3D printing and bye bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>